Hey guys, Count CL Glenn with Bridging the Gap, where we talk about bridging the generational gap as well as the wealth gap. We literally take you step by step and tell you how to bridge that gap from where you are to where you want to be uh, from the aspect of a boomer, somebody that's been there, done that, and the exer. Hope you guys enjoyed the content. Uh, make sure you subscribe to our channel and make sure you hit the bell notification. We want to let you know as soon as we drop something, we want you guys to get it. We want you to be first. So make sure you do those two things for us and we can't wait to drop some more content. Hey, good afternoon. Good morning. Hello to everyone. My name's William V. Thompson. I'm looking for my co-host, Council Glenn, but he's gone. Guys, he's on vacation, needed vacation to get those mind sales rolling again. Hey, we're part of the Bridge and the Gap. Welcome to episode 27. To be mindful, we're talking, I'm a boomer, Council's a millennial, and it's all about bridging the gap. Or another way of saying it is, we believe that you should live with one foot in the past, that's me, and one in the future. That's Count Ciel. That's something that Walt Disney said. And, and I love that philosophy because there are things in the past or the way my generation did it that his generation does it differently. And we're all about blending things together. Today in podcast 27, we're going to talk about creating tax free money. You heard me correctly. I want you to think for a minute. I want you to jot down. Let's assume that you make $100,000. I want to give you an example of the power of today's podcast. Now, most people do tax preparation, but they don't do tax planning. And when I say change the character of your cash, there are about four different income categories, and you have to understand each one of them are taxed at a different rate. For example, there's one called earn wages, like your salary. And folks, most people live there, but that's the most heavily taxed. If you're making $100,000, chances are you're going to pay roughly 40% of that $100,000 to Uncle Sam and your state and Social Security. Most people live there. However, the second type of income is what's called passive income. Passive income comes from you investing, let's say, in real estate and or an S corporation. Well, the great thing about passive income is you definitely avoid the 15.3% Social Security. And with various deductions, it lowers your tax rate. So let's say on that, you may pay 22 to 23%. Same 100000 but lower. Then there's a third one called long-term capital gains. That's when you, let's say, buy something like an equity or stock and you hold it longer than 12 months. Well, depending on your income, you may only have to pay 15% in taxes. That's under current law, but I think that's about to change. And in some cases, I'll tell you later, that money may be legally tax-free. And the fourth category that I love is tax-free money. You heard me correctly. Say it with me. Tax-free money. That means that you legally earn the 100000 and you legally do not pay a dime in taxes. So again, as a retired CPA, let me share with you things that I personally do. And you've heard me say before, I don't study to teach. I study to live. And I simply teach what I live. So here's some things that Joe and I do. I'm going to give you three Roth categories. And if you don't know much about a Roth, you definitely want to understand it. A Roth was started by, I think, a Senator Roth up in New York 25 years ago or so. A Roth allows most people, depending on income, keep that in mind, to put money into a retirement account. Now, you don't get a tax deduction, but if you leave that money in the account for five plus years, and you're 59 and a half, I meet that criteria, that whatever that Roth makes is tax-free. So let's say for an example, if my Roth has a half a million dollars in it now, and let's say this year I make 20% return on that Roth, which is $100,000, going back to our example, that means that $100,000 coming out of my Roth account, that money is legally tax-free. I don't hide it. I'm not embarrassed by it. I take it, I spend it, and or invest it. So make a note, you need a Roth regardless of your age. The second one you might not have ever heard before, 
It's called the back door Roth. I got your net one, don't you? The back door Roth. And this is how it works. A lot of times you can't contribute to a regular Roth because of your income. But you may can contribute to, let's say, a 401k and let's say a regular IRA account. Well, let's say you put $5,000 in that regular IRA account. You know what you now can do? You then can convert. You hear the word? You can convert that regular IRA, $5,000 for that year, into a Roth account because you bypass the income limitations. Now, there will be some taxes involved on the conversion, but remember, you got a $5,000 deduction when you put it in. There will be some taxes that will uh, come out of your pocket. But what did you just do? You just moved $5,000 into a Roth account, and if you let it grow, it's going to grow tax-free. And oh, by the way, you can do this every year as long as you want to. It's called a backdoor Roth. And one of my favorite Roths is what's called a self-directed IRA account, Roth IRA account. See, it allows you to put in the same limits as a regular Roth. But now I can invest in everything from crypto to real estate. I can be the banker. I can do options. I can buy a franchise. So what I'm doing when I do those things, I am potentially supercharging my earnings. And guess what? There's no limit to how much you can earn in a Roth IRA account. So when you get to 59 and a half, and it's going to come sooner than you think, trust me on that one, you're able to take that money out legally tax-free, folks. I recommend getting started today, regardless of your age. My daughter has one. She's only 19. She has one. And the goal is that when she graduates, they have substantial monies in there. And if she did nothing but properly follow what mom and dad taught her, that becomes the inheritance for the children's children. All right, let's talk about some tax-free money. Selling your house. My wife and I have been in our house now for 24 years. It's hard to imagine. And the rules say that if I've lived in my house two out of five years, and we've, we've done that, we can now sell our home. So let's say if we sold our home, we can make up to a half a million dollars tax-free. That's right, because we're married. Two fifty for her and two fifty for me. Half a million dollars. And here's the wacky part. We can turn right around and let's say buy another house. And let's say if we stayed in that house for two years, I say two years and a day, and let's say we then sold that house. Well, guess what, folks? We have another half a million dollars potential profit. So for those that are using the word old school flip, if you're really flipping some big houses with some big profits, if you're willing to stay there two years and a day, I'm going to say, you could make up to a half a million dollars on that flip. But primarily people with residential housing do that. The other one which I mentioned earlier is something called long-term capital gains. This is under current law. Let's say if I keep my income less than $75,000, I think the limits are. And let's say I, I, let's say I buy stock ABC. And let's say I hold it for 12 months and a day. I sell that stock and let's say I make a capital gain of $20,000. If my income is less than $75,000 with the joint return, I believe it is, that $20,000 long-term capital gains is taxed at zero. You heard me correctly. Now, again, under the new administration, I do believe that's going to change. But again, though, you have the rest of the year to take advantage of that. Or let's say, for an example, a little something different. Let's say you're making more than the $75,000. Well, under current law, even though you may be in the 20 or 25 or 30% tax bracket, that $20,000 profit is only taxed at about a 15% rate. See, because they're incentivizing people to invest in stocks, et cetera, to keep the economy strong. Let's keep the economy strong. And oh, by the way, let's make some money. All right, guys, as I wrap up, let me give you four or five little miscellaneous things. Because remember, we opened up and we talked about the power of doing what? Changing the character of your cash. Moving it from the earned income, which is highly taxed, to more of the passive slash tax-free money. So let me give you five of the ones that my wife and I use on a regular basis that I think will bless your family. Here's one, very simple. 
anytime you borrow on appreciated property. Let me give an example. Uh, let's say my wife and I had a rental property that we, I think, paid 70000 to have it built. It's now worth $140,000 today. I can now go to the bank. It's paid for now. I can go to the bank and, let's say, borrow $100,000. Well, because I'm borrowing that money on appreciated property, guess what? That borrowed money is tax-free. And depending on how I choose to invest the $100,000 will depend on whether or not the earnings are taxable or not. I like that idea. The other one is you should have your own company now. Whether you're an S-Corp, a C-Corp, we like those too. Your company's able to reimburse you. See, your company can reimburse you for mileage. So if you're going back and forth to service a client, your company can reimburse you. That's tax-free. Or my company takes care of any type of reimbursements I have, whether I go on a trip somewhere or take a client out to dinner, et cetera. All of that is reimbursed. And guess what? That's tax-free. Another thing ties back to your entity are benefits. It's very important that you understand as an S-Corp or C-Corp primarily There are tremendous benefits that your company can provide. Benefits like they can take care, they can give you a company car, tax-free. They can give you also travel, tax-free. They can also give you health insurance, long-term, disability. All my medical, my corporation pays for. And guess what? The corporation gets a benefit, a tax deduction, but I'm getting a tax-free benefit. Here's another one. Let's say you live in the area like we do where the furniture market or something comes through. Where my home, I could actually rent my house out for 14 days or less during the year. And let's say during that 14 days, I may charge $2,000 a day. So let's do 2,000 times 14 days. That's $28,000. As long as it's 14 days or less, that $28,000 of renting my home is legally tax free money. So find out in your so you could you could do a 14 day Airbnb wherever you live at. Just keep it at 14 days, get the max rent and it's tax free. And to my clerical friends out there, jot down housing allowance. It's based on IRS code 107 and your board has to set it up. But legally, every dime that your church gives you designates as housing allowance is legally tax free. So guys, that's a wrap for today, but I want you to understand this, that you must get with your tax practitioner, and of course we do taxes in all 50 states, tax preparation's okay, but tax planning is better. The average person through tax planning can reduce your tax liability substantially, and using proper entities are the way to go. Again, I'm William I forgot he's on vacation, but hey guys, he's coming back next week. And remember next week, we're going to be talking about uh, creating money and talking about getting loans, even with bad credit. If your credit is jacked up, your credit is messed up. We're going to provide you multiple strategies in episode 28 on how to go get the money. So again, good day and God bless you.